everyone, it's Olivia from Girly Bunches and in this week's video I'm going to be showing you how to do this Tunisian stitch, um, cro Tunisian crochet stitch which gives you this honeycomb, so it's called the honeycomb stitch. So it's made by using pearl and simple stitches and I've done it in this sort of just block colour green and as you can see if I turn it to the light and move it around you can see the honeycomb effect that you get. It's really simple to do. It's great because it lies flat, it doesn't curl up like most Tunisian crochet will want to do. And if I just, yeah, just turn it around like that, I'm sure you can see that beautiful honeycomb look um, that you get with this stitch. I love it. It's just so unusual. It's not too thick and it's not too thin. It's, got, it's nice and firm. Yeah. So this is how I do the honeycomb Tunisian crochet stitch. Is a double knit yarn, and I'm using a um, four and a half mil Tunisian crochet hook. I would normally use a four mil because I have fairly even tension, but um, when I work with Tunisian crochet, I find that my tension is a little bit tighter, so um, I'm going to be using a four and a half mil. So it's just half a mil, um, half a centimetre um, bigger than I normally. So, what we're looking for is we're looking for a foundation chain that is a multiple of two so whatever size you need your project to be and you just want to have a multiple of two chains so we're going to start off doing our chain so that's one okay so I've done 14 chains there just to give us a nice sized piece of work to um, see what we're doing and what we're going to do is we're just going to do a, a basic forward and a basic return. So that's just putting the hook through and bringing up the yarn and leaving it on the hook. Putting it through the loop, yarn over and bringing it up through. And we're just going to do that until we get to the other end. So there's our basic forward and now we're just going to do a basic return. So that's yarn over, pull the yarn through one loop and then you do a yarn over and pull the yarn through two loops and you continue to put the yarn over and pull it through two loops until you get back to the very beginning again. So this is your basic forward and return. Already you can see how having the variegated yarn really does bring out this stitch and we haven't even got anywhere yet so you can actually see that Tunisian crochet really lends itself to variegated yarn and uh, that looks delicious already to me. <laughs> okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to do a row and we're going to do alternate stitches so we're going to do a um, Tunisian simple stitch followed by a Tunisian pearl stitch and we're going to repeat that all the way across. So our first stitch is going to be a pearl stitch. So to do that you put the yarn in front of the hook and put the hook through and then pull a loop through like that. Then we're going to do a simple stitch which is just putting it through the loop and pulling yarn through and leaving it on the hook. In front for the pearl stitch and doing your Tunisian stitch and then your simple stitch and then your pearl and then your simple stitch and repeat this alternatively al alternating sorry <laughs> alternatively alternating your stitches oops not through two there you go so now that's a pearl, so we do a simple, and then we do a pearl. And this isn't a pearl knit Tunisian stitch, this is just a pearl Tunisian stitch. So I've linked everything that you need to know down below, because I've done videos on how to do these stitches separately, but now we're joining them together to make a textured 
stitch and I'll turn it again so that will be a pearl and then a simple stitch and then you finish on a simple stitch so always finish on a simple stitch okay so now we've done that we can see that we've got these stitches that come across the front so they're the pearl stitches where the yarn comes over the stitch so here it doesn't come over but here it does if you can see with the different coloured one it's much easier to see where that comes across that stitch and this one it doesn't so now we're just going to do a basic return so that's yarn over and through the first loop yarn over and through two loops and you repeat the yarn over and two loops all the way back to the start okay so this time so on this row we started with a purl stitch this time we're just going to do the simple stitch like so the next one will be a purl stitch and then we'll do a simple stitch so over the top of every purl stitch you need to do a simple stitch and over the top of every simple stitch you need to do a purl stitch so take your time check what you're working because you don't want to make miss a step so now this one will be a simple stitch and this one will be a purl so you're just doing the opposite of what you did from the previous round try not to skip any try not to miss any and like I say just take your time it's no rush you're just learning something new I'm just about to see the pattern starting to develop but this one will be a normal slip stitch simple stitch and then the purl stitch normal purl and like I say we finish on a simple stitch like so and now we're going to do our basic return Okay, so you can start to see the pattern developing where you get these sort of mini little hexagons showing. So let me do one more round. So this time we're going to start with a purl. And then simple. And then purl. And as you get into it, you'll get into the swing of things. And you'll start to pick up your pace. But just make sure you don't skip any stitches. And remember to just keep doing one purl, one simple stitch, one purl, one simple stitch. And then alternate for the next row. And again, finish with two, uh, finish the row with a simple stitch. And you can start to see the texture growing. So do your simple basic return and I'm going to come back when I've done a few more rows. So there we go, I've come back after doing a couple more rows and as you can see, if I just tilt it into the light, you can see these sort of mini hexagon shapes which gives it that honeycomb look and I really love this stitch. It's my favourite Tunisian stitch um, sort of for texture because 
one it doesn't curl up so much as you can see that's laying nice and flat and if you've seen my previous videos and there's a playlist link down below to um, my Tunisian crochet um, you'll see that just doing a simple stitch does make the work curl up a lot but this doesn't curl up anything like that because you're doing these sort of alternate pearl and simple stitches so I think using the variegated yarn does look adorable with it you can really see how the stitch progresses and it does look like you've kind of woven so there you go that's my Tunisian um, honeycomb stitch tutorial I really hope you enjoyed this video I'd love a thumbs up if you did and if you haven't subscribed I would love it if you did there's a subscription box um, button to press down below press it I would love it if you did and uh, then you'll get to see each of my videos as they come out each week if you have any suggestions or questions or you're not too sure about what I did do put them in the comments box down below I will try and reply to your um, query I might not get back to you straight away I do work full time but I will get back to you very soon and I always try and help if I can and you can always catch me on Instagram I'm there a lot <laughs> or Facebook and Twitter just say hi or send me a link to something that you've made I'd love to see if you've made something using one of my tutorial videos and uh, yeah I really appreciate uh, a, a like if you've if you've done that thing many thanks if you didn't like this video let me know why and uh, I'll see what we can do about that okay so I'll stop now stop rambling and uh, say thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video thanks bye everyone it's Olivia from Girly Bunches and in this week's video I'm going to be showing you how I made this cute adorable 3D hanging heart. Uh, it doesn't have to be hanging it just